There's a lot of noise out there when it comes to the best supplements or vitamins that can help you fix your fatty liver or detox your liver, but which of these supplements are actually worth your money or even safe to begin with? Well, in this video, I'll give you a list of supplements that have good scientific evidence behind them, and I'll also let you know who should or should not be taking them. And more importantly, I'll go over important safety concerns you need to watch out for with each of these supplements. I'm Dr. Leonid Kim. I am board certified in internal and obesity medicine. And on this channel, I discuss the most up-to-date and evidence-based information on the topics of weight loss, metabolic health, and longevity. Let's get into it. The first supplement that actually has good evidence behind it is turmeric, or more specifically, I'm talking about curcumin which is an active compound found in turmeric. And the reason curcumin is so effective in helping reverse fatty liver is because it helps lower our blood sugar. Curcumin also helps with insulin sensitivity and it helps remedy metabolic dysfunction. And all of these things, high blood sugar, insulin resistance, are all hallmarks of fatty liver disease. And the way curcumin does it is by stimulating glucose uptake through the GLUT4 transporters in our fat cells and our muscle cells. So it clears up more of the circulating glucose from the bloodstream. And curcumin also regulates the AMPK pathway, which is the same pathway that is targeted by the common diabetes medication called metformin. And on top of that, curcumin also regulates the gene expression of glucose transporters in the pancreas. And by doing so, it stimulates natural insulin secretion. And there was a recent meta-analysis of nine randomized controlled trials that was published in 2019 that showed that curcumin supplementation produced a significant decrease in liver markers like ALT and AST and showed beneficial effects on metabolic parameters in patients with fatty liver. The next supplement I want to discuss is omega-3 fatty acids. Now omega-3s and particularly EPA and DHA can help reverse fatty liver in several different ways. First, they can reduce inflammation by lowering the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And inflammation is a huge component of the disease process in fatty liver. Omega-3s can also help decrease triglycerides and enhance fatty acid oxidation which further helps reduce the accumulation of fat in the liver. And a systematic review and meta-analysis of 11 randomized control studies show that omega-3 supplementation significantly reduced liver markers and marginally reduced liver fat content. But there is an important caveat to consider with omega-3s. The meta-analysis noted a dose-dependent trend or a greater improvement in fatty liver markers with higher doses of EPA or DHA, but that doesn't mean that everyone should be taking higher doses of omega-3s, as we had many studies showing that supplementation with omega-3 fatty acids, especially at higher doses, is associated with an increased risk for atrial fibrillation, which is an abnormal heart rhythm that can lead to strokes and heart failure. Now, this is definitely one of the supplements that I would make sure you discuss with your doctor, as it has clear benefits, but it also has small but real risks. And both the risks and the benefits go up as we increase the dose. And with my patients, I usually do not recommend high doses of omega-3s unless someone's at a very high risk for cardiac disease, at which point the benefits of high doses of omega-3s may outweigh the small risk of atrial fibrillation. But outside of that, whether you should supplement with omega-3s or at what dose really depends on your individual medical history and what risk you're willing to tolerate. And also, I always stress that for most people, you really don't need to take a supplement to get these benefits, as it's probably better to get your daily recommended dietary needs by eating foods that are rich in omega-3s, like seafood, walnuts, and chia seeds. And by the way, as I go through this list, let me know in the comments if you take any of these supplements, and let me know which brands you recommend, as I'm always looking for recommendations. The next supplement that you need to consider is a simple probiotic, because what's becoming more and more evident is the role of our gut microbiome and its effect on liver health, especially when it comes to fatty liver disease. So human studies have shown that people with biopsy-proven fatty liver disease have increased intestinal permeability when compared to healthy individuals. And that intestinal permeability is what leads to gut microbiome translocation or movement of bacteria that is usually found in the gut into outside areas like the outside lymphatic system and the liver. 
and that eventually triggers liver inflammation that can lead to NASH or non-alcoholic state of hepatitis, which is a more severe form of fatty liver disease. And I want to highlight an umbrella of systematic review and meta-analyses published in 2022 that show that probiotic supplementation was associated with an improvement of liver markers like ALT, AST, and GGT, and that probiotics appear to be safe without any evidence of adverse events. And while we're talking about probiotics, it's important to focus not just on the probiotics, which are helpful gut bacteria that we want to colonize our microbiome, but we also need to surround that bacteria with prebiotics, which are non-digestible fibers that serve as food for the good bacteria. And these prebiotics help the good bacteria survive in your intestine. So it's often not enough to just take probiotics without ensuring a good supply of prebiotics to go along with it. And there is a small but a randomized controlled clinical trial in Brazil that showed that treatment with a symbiotic, which is a mixture of a probiotic and a prebiotic, for three months, reduced the grade of hepatic steatosis and improved some of the metabolic parameters associated with non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, hepatitis, such as body weight, BMI, and waist circumference. Now, you don't need to take a fancy symbiotic supplement as it's usually better to get the prebiotic component from natural foods like apples, bananas, oats, chickpeas, asparagus, and red kidney beans. The next supplement I want to talk about is choline, and choline has been gaining popularity as a treatment for fatty liver. And a recent case control study showed that people that consume high intakes of choline and betaine had an associated 81% reduction in hepatic steatosis. But that was just a case control study, and we still need more conclusive research on if the supplementation with choline is actually beneficial for most people, and not just for those that are choline deficient. We also don't have any studies to show at what doses is choline actually beneficial Official. So until we get more data, I would make sure that you get enough choline through your food, which means eating plenty of eggs with egg yolk in them, as well as eating lean meats, dairy, and seafood. So another supplement that has decent evidence to help with fatty liver disease is berberine. Now berberine is an alkaloid derivative that is isolated from many kinds of forms of medicinal plants and has been used in Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine for thousands of years. And a meta-analysis of six clinical trials that included over 500 patients showed that treatment with berberine had a positive effect on liver function, blood glucose, and cholesterol in patients with fatty liver disease. There are also animal studies, for what that's worth, that show that berberine can modulate your microbiome to increase the levels of GLP-1 hormones in your body. And that is the basis for diabetes and obesity drugs like semaglutide or trisepatite. Now the next supplement that looks promising but just doesn't have as much data on it is coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. It's often used for its anti-inflammatory benefits and as we discussed, inflammation is a major factor in the development of fatty liver. And there is a small, double-blind placebo-controlled randomized control trial of 44 participants where a treatment group received 100 milligrams of CoQ10 for 12 weeks. And the group showed a significant decrease in liver markers like ALT and GGT, as well as a decrease in markers of inflammation like CRP and TNF-alpha. But this is a very small trial and it's hard to extrapolate these results to larger populations. And a recent meta-analysis of six studies showed a significant improvement in liver markers but only in specific subgroup analyses, depending on the duration of the intervention. And an important thing to keep in mind is CoQ10 can interact with blood thinner medications, so it's important to talk to your doctor before taking it. Lastly, let's talk about vitamin E, which is a natural antioxidant. And there was an older, randomized control trial that showed that vitamin E at 800 international units per day was associated with a significantly higher rate of improvement in non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. And a recent review of several meta-analyses and randomized control trials showed that vitamin E supplementation improved liver fibrosis, steatosis, and liver markers like ALT and AST. Now with vitamin E, it's especially important to discuss taking it with your doctor, as higher doses of vitamin E have been associated with an increase in all-cause mortality, as well as an increase in the rate of prostate cancer. So for that reason, supplementation with vitamin E is only recommended for people with a more advanced fatty liver disease. So definitely talk to your doctor before starting vitamin E, as the dose and the formulation for vitamin E are gonna be very important depending on your needs. 
Now I did not talk about one common supplement that a lot of people take for liver health and that is milk thistle. And that is because I already made a separate video on that earlier and I'll link it in the description below. And if there are any other supplements that I missed, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to talk about them in my future videos. And by the way, you do not need any of these supplements to fix your fatty liver disease as you can get most of these benefits by eating the right things and focusing on food as your medicine. But these supplements can enhance your recovery and expedite the process. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.